Hi Flosstube, my name is Lynn and my channel is The Lancashire Stitcher. Um, welcome to my channel, it's a channel predominantly about cross stitch but I do include other crafts as and when I finish things off. Um, today is Wednesday the 7th of October 2020. Um, I'm hoping to get this uploaded today um, and I have faster broadband so hopefully I can get it edited and uploaded a lot quicker than usual okay so um i had a couple of questions on my last video um just i'm just going to read a couple out uh, denise asked me where i find kits for the beady baubles that i showed last time like this one um i buy them from spellbound bead company um, which is in England um, they sell kits with really clear instructions but you can also buy books and packs of beads if you want to do your own versions of the, of the bead of the baubles. Nadine and Anastasia asked me if I use a tutorial for the flat folds that I showed you last time so like this one. Um, originally I used Vonna Pfeiffer's tutorials um, on YouTube. I'll put a link below to those. Um, but I think I've done that many now and I'll just do it in my own way. Um, but originally I definitely used those um, to finish things. Um, and I've also recently found that Helen D does some good tutorials too. So I'll put a link to her below as well. Right, so some of my old finishes. This one is Cat Lessons for People by Lizzie Kate and the frame, um, I bought the frame with the chart from Nimble Thimble and then Chris at Nimble Thimble framed it for me when I finished it. So yeah, as you m might be able to tell I'm a cat person. So um, this one is Faith by My Big Toe Designs. It's stitched using some Northern Lights thread um, and then um, my old framer framed it for me. This one is Promise Me, sorry, that way. Promise Me by Lizzie Kate. Um, I used to have this hanging in my classroom when I had my own classroom. Um, it's something that I need to remember myself. Again, all these have been done using the Colpar threads. This one is Pecking Order by Lenart and it was done as a round robin with some friends several years ago. Um, each person did a little bit of the chart um, and then I framed it myself and I really love this picture. So there we go. This one is Autumn, uh, not Autumn, Needlecraft ABCs by Lavender and, uh, oh good grief, it's by Little House Needleworks and this was a lockdown finish and I do have some bell pull ends to fasten it on to so hopefully I'll get that done soon. This one is Dear Santa by Lizzie Kate. Um, I used to have this hanging in my classroom at Christmas and finished into a wall hanging. There you go. And then this one is The Hikers by Heritage. Um, it's one of the Silhouette series and I framed it myself. Um, I've done some more fully finishing in the last two weeks. Um, this is Toy Shop by Mill Hill and this is a Mill Hill frame that I bought from um, Nimble Thimble. So it's, um, just needed the design fastening on the back. This one is Wildflower Garden by The Drawn Thread. This was another lockdown finish, even it had been in my box for a couple of years and 
it's very detailed in this bit here it took a while to do that square there and then these flowers are all french knots so all done using the Colfar threads i got it as a kit from Mil from uh, nimble thimble there you go and i've just made it into a wall hanging um i've seen a few people have like the old um, shutter doors um with magnets on so i'm hoping to try and find one of those and then i can fasten them on to that okay now this one you may recall from my last video was one of my across stitch challenge pieces and in my last video i had the some of the snowflake finished um and when i actually started stitching it i realized why i'd actually put it in the box and not carried on with it um some of the snowflake was half a stitch out and as you can see it's quite symmetrical so it was very noticeable so i basically had to unstitch that um before and sew it back again before i could continue and then i did the four hours um that i'd challenged myself to do on it and um it was almost finished so i just carried on and finished it off and then i've made it into a little cushion with some snowflake fabric on the back so let's let it snow by rovaris and uh, the little snowflake charm came with the chart This is What Happens at Grandma's Stays at Grandma's by Waxing Moon Designs. Lots of nice buttons on this. It's quite colourful. Um, I really like stitching this design. And I've made it into a flat fold with some nice stripy fabric on the back. So, again, using all the Carlfar colours. This one. I know it's an Ink Circles design. I can't find it on the Ink Circles website though. Um, the fabric came with the chart. Um, this was one of the charts I bought on my first trip to the US uh, back in 2011. Um, I had put on Facebook um, that I was visiting New York and could anybody tell me where there were any cross stitch shops? And a very nice lady who's no longer with us um, offered to take me to a shop in New Jersey called Where Victoria's Angels Stitch. Um, we went on the bus one day, we met up, went on the bus, um, went to the shop and uh, when I walked in I thought I'd died and gone to heaven basically. Um, I, I didn't know about Nimble Thimble at that time so the only cross stitch things I knew about were online. Um, so when I walked in this shop and it was just cross stitch, it was fantastic. And of course I spent a lot of money and bought a lot of kits, some of which are still in my box that haven't been touched, but it was just fantastic. I'd never been anywhere that where they had things like ink circles, charts, they had weak style work threads on the, on the hanging, um, you know anything you could ever wish for was in that shop and, uh, and it was fantastic plus they had a little room at the back where you could go in and stitch which we did do um and yeah it was a fantastic day i'll never forget that day and i went again we, we, we went back to new york a couple of years later and i met up with her again and we went again um i've been since but um my friend had passed so um as far as i knew i wouldn't know how to get to the sh to the to the shop without her because she knew which buzz to get where to get off and i just did, couldn't trust myself to do that so yeah it was it was fantastic i'll never forget that so this this i, mean, I actually stitched this it's not long after that so it's been made up made, been finished since around 2011 and just never been finished so um, I managed to finish it into a little hanging with some nice check fabric on the back. So yeah. This one is Pocket Ring B by Heart in Hand. And 
this was a very quick stitch I did it in one evening and as you can see I've made it into a, a jar lid uh, it's, an old, it's a kilner jar that's never been used as you can see it's still got the labelling inside and I've just made it it was a, one of the ones with a loose top on the top so I put it in there with a little bit of wadding so it's nice and straight okay um then i framed a couple of things um this is one of the be well and stitch designs it was from heart in hand no it wasn't it was from hands on designs it was a freebie um i stitched it during lockdown obviously and it's on a piece of pole stitches grab bag fabric and then i've just found this old frame it looks very 80s 90s frame um but it, it suits it nicely um so yeah be well choose happy be well and then this one is a silver creek samplers chart um with your dreams i stitched this quite a while ago um and this frame i bought from the range um a couple of weeks ago thinking i've i'm sure i'll have something to put in that nice frame and yeah i've put that in so again it's one of those motivational quotes so i really like that one as well okay so stitching i've done over the past couple of weeks i've had two new starts um one that wasn't expected but i'd seen this um plum street samplers autumn gifts um becca at sambury stitches has been stitching it and every time i watched her floss tube i thought i've got that in my stash i really must do it and it was basically screaming at me to start it even though i didn't have all the um classic color works colors um i decided to start it and sub some of the colors for dmc so so far i've done that um it's been stitched on a piece of 32 count white even even weave using as i said classic color works and some dmc's i love the colors i just love the autumn colors and the little owl so yeah um the next new start was one of my acrostic challenge pieces and it's with lakeside needle crafts under the sea okay this one is being stitched on a piece of under the sea fabric from lakeside needle crafts and i've finished the octopus as you can see the fabric looks very nice for under the sea um, I stitched this for four hours and again I hadn't I'd nearly finished the octopus so I decided right I'm gonna finish, finish the octopus so he's done the thing with this fabric is that it's nice and colourful on one side and then on the back it's just plain white so you know which side you're sticking on the next one the rest of my stitching that I've done um, play, playstation controller by the needle and floss been doing this for my husband for a Christmas present trying to do a bit every every day and this is where I've got to so far so this side is now finished and the middle's finished I just need to do this other side of the controller and then it will be completely finished so I'm hoping to have that finished in the next couple of weeks it's been stitched on a piece of 32 count white even weave using DMC threads. We use, we use two main colours and then there's a little bits of other colours. The other one is One Nation by Bygone Stitches. Stitching this is part of the One Nation Sal stitch along, so hashtag One Nation SAL. I'm doing two stars and a state a week so, until I catch up with the stars. So there you go you can see i'm catching up with the stars i've done more of the lines and then i've got louisiana and indiana done on the states okay 
I stitched this in hand um, so it gets rather creased because you're going from one end to the other um, stitching different parts so I don't want to put it in a frame because I'd be constantly having to take it out of the frame and put it back in but then it gets creased because I'm stitching it in hand. The next one is The Three Wise Men by Blackberry Lane Designs. Okay. This is a, a nice little design. I'm stitching it on 40 count sandstone linen by Permin. And as you can see, I've now got some snow, uh, some um, palm trees. I could only stitch this when the light was good because um, it's really difficult to see the holes uh, in the artificial light. So I'd stitch on that during the day and then stitch autumn gifts at night. And um, just got the picture for the next one. The next one is Enchanted Alphabet by Lavender and Lace. Stitching this on a piece of 32 count cotton clouds by the crafty kitten and that's how much i've done so far i really like the colors in this really colorful design the sun's decided to come out today right now so there we go my next one is fern by nora corbett i keep wanting to call this jade I've, on occasions have called it jade don't know why it's called fern <laughs> so yeah this one is being stitched on a piece of 28 count buttercup joy by sparklies and that's what i've got done so far um, i've managed to finish the skin and quite the top part of a dress apart from the beads so i'm quite happy with progress on her the next one is Halloween Sampler by Cottage Garden Samplings. This was one of the 24 hours of cross stitch cross stitch challenges. I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count antique grey, no vintage grey linen. And I managed to do three words on this. I've done broom. Eerie and Halloween using the Colfar colours. Oh, I've done the, the bats as well. Okay. Right. Haul. Two things, two items to show you in haul. The first one is Summertide Blessings by Plum Street Samplers. I like this design. Another one that will be on my list somewhere. And the next one is Baby It's Cold Outside by Heartstring Sample. Yeah. I got this a couple of weeks ago, but I forgot to show it on my last video. I'm waiting for some fabric to arrive from Pole Stitches because um, I've got another chart that's screaming out at me and I've not got it to hand. Um, I've got World Peace Angel by Lavender and Lace and I've ordered a piece of silver lining fabric that I really want to stitch it on. So as soon as that arrives, I'll be starting it. <laughs> um, right. I thought I'd talk about some things I've picked up from watching floss tube um i've already said about the the finishing tutorials but um i watched the tutorial the other day for pin stitch um now i've heard of pin stitch before but i had no idea what it was i've heard people saying they start the work using pin stitch and it's really good for doing random stitches in the middle of nowhere so um x stitch md or Shiloh, um, she put a really good tutorial up the other day and I watched it and it's like, why have I never learned this in the past? You know, it's really a really good way of starting off your thread. So I'll put a link below to that. I really I really like that um, stitch for starting off. I've not got the hang of finishing with it yet, but yeah, I can, I've, I'm, I'm using it to start off now. Um, when I use DMCs, I usually just use the loop 
method to start but then when you're using hand dyed you can't really use the loop method so i was doing the usual fasten it down um, but this pin stitch is really good so yeah i recommend you have a look at that um, the other thing I've learned, I've found out is um, using these. Now I got this idea from um, Annie Joyfield Stitcher. Um, they're just luggage tags that I bought on Amazon. And then I print out a little tag so I can write down what the fabric is that I'm using so I know the designer and the name of the pattern and then I have a little picture so you can see what your, your finished design is going to look like straight away. Um, so yeah, I used I've started making these for all my little project bags. Um, I usually just use some um bags that I got off Amazon um to keep each project in. Um, but then I just pin these to them to the zip, and then I can see what what it is that's inside straight away. So I like that idea. Um, and I wanted to ask people about how do you store your threads um i i have a full set of dmc course extras um and dmc's i keep on bobbins and they're in a drawer i'll put a photo up um it's a a drawer cabinet that was originally made for keeping screws and things like that in and um, the little plastic drawers and i just keep them indoors but then my Gentle Arts, Weeks Dye Works, Classic Colour Works and NPIs, Dinky Dyes, they go in a really useful box um, and then they're kept in fossil wear bags. Um, and then when I'm using DMCs, I just, like the, the dry cupboard's right near where I sit, so I just pull them out as I need them. But then these ones, the, the gentle arts and other things, I pull out the bags that I need and then I use a, a hoop, a ring, but then um, that's kept with the chart while I'm working on it and then they go back in the box when it's out of the rotation. Um, I'll show you this. This is a... This is a thread keep that I got from Pretty Little Thread Keeps. I'll put a link to her below. Um, I've only got a couple of these, but I have a lot of these rings. Um, but yeah, um, that's how I keep it. I know people use thread drops these days, but I just think there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> that's more useful to me than a thread drop. Um, so yeah, just... I want to know. I want to know how different people store their threads. What do you do with them? Because um, yeah, just different ideas. Um, but yeah, uh, right. Life update. My cat. I've got two cats. Um, Luna is eight, eight years old, and she was a rescue cat. Um, we took her in, somebody had found her and I was working in a school at the time and she was, the person who found her worked with me and she asked if anybody was interested in taking in a cat because she had a dog so she couldn't keep it. So we took her in, um, obviously we had to take her to the vets and get her immunised and uh, neutered and all sorts, um, but she's fine now, she's eight years old. Um, Phoebe is 20. Um, she, we got her when she was 10, um, my friend used to live in the same town as I do, um, but then she moved down south and she couldn't take the cat with her, so we took her in, um, and she's very old now, she's, like I say, she's 20, um, she's not, she's not, well, no, she's the most independent cat you're likely to meet, um, she, doesn't like being made a fuss of. She doesn't like people holding her. Um, she'll come and sit next to you on the on the arm of the chair or whatever. But and she'll let you stroke her. But that's as much as she likes. Um, and she just plods along, you know, as she does. Um, like as she's got older, she doesn't go out as much now. She she'll sometimes go outside through the back. We've got a cat flap on the back door. Um, but she'll only go in the backyard and then she'll come back in after a bit. 
Um, anyway, um, last week we noticed she was chewing as a claw quite a lot. And I knew her claws were got long because you could hear them when she was walking. Um, but then she kept chewing at this one specific claw. And I, I had a look and the nail had actually curled round and it had dug into a pad under her foot. So I had to take her to the vets and luckily um, the vet just clipped a toenail, clipped her nails, her claws. And the vet said, I couldn't go in the room obviously because of COVID restrictions. Um, but they said, they just she just let them do it. Because <laughs> like, I said the last time she went to the vet, she hissed at the vet, which I'd, I'd never heard her hiss before. And she'd really hissed at the vet. Um, but she just let them, you know, it'd obviously been causing some pain, but Phoebe being Phoebe, she just didn't show us that it was hurting her. And um, she just let them cut it and take it out. And anyway, they just let, they put some antiseptic spray on it and um, anyway she's a lot happier now anyway she seems she seems to be a little, bit more chirpier than she's been um, so yeah that's that's as much as a, of a life update i've got because everything else is just the same still no work still still restricted in what we can do um weekly outing to tesco's is about as much as i do um apart from the odd um trip taking somebody to hospital for an appointment um but yeah, uh, so yeah, I think that's about it for today. So thank you for watching again. Um, if you like what you see, please leave a comment, like, share, um, subscribe, uh, and I'll see you again in two weeks. Happy stitching. Bye.